started over 130 years ago, Victorinox is one of the most recognizable knife brands on the market today. Stick around and I'll give you a history and go in a full review of one of my favorites, the Huntsman Swiss Army Knife. Hi, it's the OCD Hunter bringing you tips, tricks, DIY hacks, and other useful ways that my OCD can help make your life a little more simpler. Victorinox was all started in 1884 by Carl Eisner I in a cutler's workshop in a small village called Ebach, which is in the district of Schweiz, Switzerland. There, his background was in making surgical tools at the time. From there, in the late 1800s, he established the Association of Swiss Master Cutlers, which resulted in him delivering the first major supply of soldier knives to the Swiss Army, who at the time was getting their knives from Germany. Then, in 1897, he patented the original Swiss Officers and Sports Knife, which is known around the world today as the Swiss Army Knife. His mother, Victoria, always actively supported Carl and his efforts. And in the early 1900s, after her passing, he decided to choose her first name, Victoria, as the brand name and registered the emblem with the cross and shield as the trademark. But later, in 1921, with the invention of stainless steel, or Inox, he decided to change the name to Victoria Knox, which is now what it's known for today. And in the 1900s, the company still continued to grow, and with developments of several new technologies, Victoria Knox's processes of reproducing their knives got easier while keeping consistency and maintaining quality throughout the product. Then in 1945, the good old US of A's economy hit the scene. The US soldiers stationed in Europe after the World War II started buying them in large quantities, making it a popular souvenir to take home. And yet another interesting fact involves the US is in 1977, the original Swiss Army knife became an exhibit for design at the Museum of Modern Art, New York. Finally, in 1979, the company is switched from a sole proprietorship to a family owned company, Victorinox AG. And in the late 1980s until today, the company continued to grow and expand, going into different markets such as selling watches, travel gear, clothing, and fragrances. Today, it's a registered trademark in over 120 countries, and 10% of the company is owned by a nonprofit foundation which supports international charities. Also, they acquired the Swiss watch and knife maker Wanger. Wanger remains an independently operated subsidiary of Victorinox, but is integrated into the Victorinox brand. And in 2017, Victorinox produces its 500th millionth Swiss Army knife, and Wanger celebrates its 125 years. Today you can find all kinds of sorts of variations of tools and sizes, and with different artwork. My Victorinox of choice is the Huntsman in the traditional red scales, made from Celador, which I don't know much about, but if you do, leave a comment and let me know more about it. It's categorized in the medium size knife, coming in at 3.4 ounces and measures an eighth of an inch by three and a half inches. And it's stuffed full of tools, including a large blade, a small blade, a can opener with a three millimeter screwdriver, a bottle opener with a six millimeter screwdriver, a wire stripper, a reamer punch and sewing awl, corkscrew, scissors, wood saw, multi-purpose hook, toothpick, tweezers, and a key ring. Victoria Knox states that, and I quote, guarantees all knives and tools to be of first class stainless steel and also guarantees a lifetime against any defects in material and workmanship, but damage caused by normal wear and tear, misuse or abuse are not covered by this guarantee. If you want to support the channel and purchase your own, look to the link down in the description. Also, we just got in our new OCD Hunter t-shirts. The link for that also is in the description. But if you buy one, please let me know how the vendor does because there's plenty of different vendors out there and I want to make sure that you're getting the best quality you possibly can get. As for the feel of the knife, it fits in my hand nicely and I wear large to extra large gloves. The scales can be a little slick in the hand and I found that the biggest problem with the slickness is when I have it in my shorts front pocket because I've actually found the knife will slide out of my front pocket 
when I recline in a chair. That is one of the reasons for my lanyard mod, which I'll go over in a different video. There should be a link at the top of the screen, and there's a link in the description if you want to watch it. But as for the knife getting wet, the scales actually become more grippy and lock pretty solid in the hand. It has two blades, which are very nice because in one tool, you get your redundancy. You have the main blade and a backup blade. Both are designed with a spear point with a sharpening angle 15 degrees. The biggest has a two and one quarter inch cutting surface, and the other is just a little less than one and a half inches. They came razor sharp out of the box, and the stainless steel they use is called X55CRM014 with a Rockwell hardness of 56, which kind of puts it in the middle of the pack on hardness. I can understand why they don't want to get too hard with these blades this thin, because the harder you go, the more brittle the steel. 56 gives you a decent hardness that gives you a decent edge retention. It is not too terribly hard to sharpen. These knives are really good at corrosion resistance, and there are plenty of videos out there testing this. The rest of the tools are made from a different type of metal using what Victoria Knox labels X39CR13 and a Rockwell hardness ranging between 52 and 56. For example, the screwdriver bottle opener is a lower hardness so it won't break when putting torque on it to turn a screw. It is good to note that none of the tools on this knife lock like some of the bigger multi-tools they sell. All items work on a slip joint system with the springs listed at X20CR13 with a 49 Rockwell hardness. As you can see, it's perfect size for several of those camping chores, like cutting an apple. Since the blade is nice and thin, it's a great slicer for food prep, like potatoes. Here I'm giving it the sharpness test to see how thin I can slice a tomato. I purchased this knife over six months ago and I've yet to sharpen it. This is still the factory edge. It's off season, so I don't have any game to prep, but here you can see that it slices nicely through meat. As for wood, it makes great feather sticks. or to whittle a spear point stick to cook on a fire. Or tent steaks. The spine of the knife is rounded, so it's not good for striking ferro rods. But the saw and the awl make up for that, as well as they're great for stripping bark or fat wood for tinder. This is not a knife that I would normally think of to baton with. 
As for other camp tasks, it does well cutting through rope and other food necessities. Even though the blades are corrosion resistant, I still put a light coating of food grade oil on them after I clean them, just in case. My oil of choice is olive oil to give them that extra protection. Just behind the two blades is a wood saw with really aggressive teeth. The cutting edge measures around two and a half inches and the saw cuts wood surprisingly well for its size. But it's not something you'll be cutting large logs and enjoying yourself. Next is the scissors, which I love. The overall size is about two to five inches with the cutting surface is about three fourths of an inch. Super sharp, great tool. Next in line is a can opener with a three millimeter screwdriver. I want to take a minute and say that what surprises me is how many people don't know how to work a can opener on their multi-tools. For this Victorinox, you can see the blade is on the front, so you'll move forward with the tool. Simply grab the outside of the can with the hook, then push down, then continue the motion. To see one of the other types, you can see how the design shapes are different. This particular design, you will work towards yourself while trying to open the can. Ending off this side is a bottle opener with a six millimeter screwdriver and a wire stripper. On the reverse side is a corkscrew, which I've never used to open up a wine bottle, but can be handy for untying really tight knots. And then there's one of the tools I think is the most underrated tool on this multi-tool, and that's the partial hook tool. It's advertised as a partial hook where you can carry packages bound in string. But let me tell you, there are so many other uses. I have a video describing just some of the many uses you can do. Check the link above or in the description to watch. Even though I love this tool, I do have one issue with the design, and that's where the key ring is. I find when I'm putting away the hook, it almost always catches and gets stuck on the ring. Probably for most though, who don't use the tool as much as I do, it probably wouldn't bother them. Ending this side is the Reamer Punch Awe Tool. Great for punching holes or widening drilled holes. Plus, that sharp edge is great for striking a ferro rod and removing tinder off of wood or bat wood. Finally is the tweezers and the toothpick. I replaced my toothpick with a ferro rod. If you want to see a video on that, click the link or in the description to find out more. This is a great tool in a moderately compact size. You'll probably hear me say this uh, again and again, but I'm not a huge folding knife fan, but Victorinox is one of the exceptions. This is my go-to EDC and I carry it everywhere I'm allowed to carry. It has proven itself time and time again that it's dependable. Once again, if you want to get your own and you want to support the channel, check the link below in the description. I'm the OCD Hunter and I hope that my continual painstaking practice of changing, fixing, and improving on ideas will help you out in your endeavors. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Comments are always welcome.